Right. Photoshop is something we're going to be using throughout the year. We're not just going to do one or two projects on it. It's something that students rely on quite a lot. For us to understand Photoshop, we need to have the basics. We need to understand the key things. Setting up a page in Photoshop is just like going into a station shop and buying a sheet of paper. If I decided that my final outcome is going to be A4, that's what I need to tell the computer. It's going to be A4 with the proper quality setting. If my final outcome is going to be A3, well, the computer needs to know that in advance. You cannot start off a document in Photoshop and then suddenly say, oh, I want to make it bigger, because you're, you're stretching the pixels. Images are made up of pixels. Tiny little squares all joined together. And that's how we, we measure our resolution. There's a number of pixels in the x-axis and a number of pixels in the y-axis. Multiply them together and you get your resolution. The bigger the resolution, the better the quality. Right. But the more amount of information or space it takes up. Right. There, Information is measured in bytes, tiny things called bytes. Megabytes or kilobytes is in the thousands. Megabytes uh, are in the millions, and gigabytes are in the hundreds of thousands of millions. So we need to remember our measurements. Okay? So it's bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and then gigabytes. Your images should be. In measured when you look at the file type in megabytes. If it goes below into kilobytes, the resolution is quite low. If it goes into gigabytes, it's you've got a huge document, way too much information in it. So we'll go on to Photoshop and we'll look at how to set our first page. Your Photoshop is on your desktop, same as Bridge. Open it up then you've got the document that you need or you've got the template it's set preset that the layout is the same for everybody to create a new page just like if you're going into the stationery shop and getting a piece of paper you'll go file new give it a title and then you'll be able to see it easier with the tabs you need to set it to international paper size and for the moment I'm going to pick a4. A3 is double A4. A2 is double A3. It'll give you the dimensions in millimeters. If you want to remember it, it's easier to remember in centimeters. This is my resolution, the number of pixels per inch. Always put it 300 pixels per inch. You have got the option to change it in centimeters, but it industry standards is 300 pixels per inch. Double check its RGB color. If all, everything there is set then you end up with a blank sheet of paper. If you want the image to be landscape you switch the measurements around but here if you go to image and image rotation you can change it to landscape that way can reverse it by going counterclockwise or you can do edit and undo or you can do you can do control and Z alright so you've got those options there if you want to go back more than one step it's control alt and Z and control alt and Z again if you keep wanting to go backwards but control and Z will only go one step backwards. Now we've got our A4 sheet of paper we need to bring images to that sheet of paper. Only ever open images in Bridge. Okay, The so Bridge is a section of the Creative Suite program so Adobe Creative Suite. This allows me to sort my images, to grade my images, to filter them, put them in files. You can look at it small like that, or you can increase that you can zoom in to see the quality. 
it'll take a second sometimes for the full resolution to come through. By double clicking on one of these, it'll allow me to open it in Photoshop. We'll look at more bridge later on, but I don't want to see people dragging an image from here onto a page. Because what happens, if you look at this, this is not the file. This is what we call a link, an index link to an image. So that image won't be successful. If you want to, as I said, open any images in Photoshop, make sure you're using Browse and Bridge and then double click onto it. So, I want to quickly open up my feather image again. If you look up at the top, we've got two different tabs. To create those pages that they float around, just simply do that. With Photoshop, images work on the layers. All right. So you've got a flat image that appears on your screen, but you want to work on layers. So you bring them in separately. You take away each layer and you work on it. And whatever's on top is a predominant layer. You work all the time in layers of Photoshop, in text, with shapes, with images, whatever it might be. What you need to remember is that you always save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file. Once you want to print it, you will flatten it under layers and then flatten image and then you will save it as a JPEG. So these are new things for at the moment but as long as we have it recorded and on our blog for you to look at later on Moodle you can keep going back to them. So it's JPEGs to print and that's a compressed file but make sure you press save as because once you save over the Photoshop file with all the layers you can't change your image. It's like if I got this, put it through a laminator and sealed it solid. So, we want to bring this image across. So, down here are our tools. We've got a series of tools which we're going to learn at a different point, learn about at different points. This one is our move tool. We'll take that image, drag, drop. Minimize that. And what we see here now is that this image is bigger than my page. That's because it's a good quality image. And we need to resize. Never increase your image size more than 10%. All you're doing is trying to break down those pixels. So as a matter of interest, if we zoom in with our Alt key, we keep zooming into this image, we'll see how it's made. We see the pixels. This is how images are made. The smaller the pixels, the finer the quality, but the more memory that's taken up. All we need is 300 pixels per inch, and then we've got industry standard. So if we zoom out, we've got this image. Oh, I've duplicated. We'll learn that at a different stage. We've got this image that's too big. To edit that or resize it, because we're going smaller, it's fine. You can do image, oh, sorry, edit, and transform. And then you can do transform or free transform. If you look at the end of this instruction, there's a shortcut. Use the shortcuts, get used to them, folks. Okay? So for us, it's control T, transform. Transform means to change the size. So, control T, we see the box is suddenly being created around it. You have to use the shift key while using um, a resizing. You have to use the shift key while resizing. If not, I can resize it and squish it. And I will never get it back to the right ratio of, and in proportion. But if I press shift now, but I've squashed it, it keeps it in shape. You must press shift to keep it in shape. Again press shift because I'm going to resize again. And moving is just pushing it about. 
double click do that again so we've got my box for resizing I can accept it or I can just double click for this you should when you're setting up your Photoshop always click on auto select and that means whatever layer you click on is the one that will move so if you look over to the side over here we've got layers building up just like the plastic that I showed you it's layer after layer we could bring another image in go to bridge select a great one here with a bit of contrast grab the tab so if you look at it now